Imagine loving your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about multitasking. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the myth of multitasking, why multitasking feels efficient but really isn't, and how multitasking may really be a bad thing. If this is your first episode of Women in the Middle, I'm so glad you found the podcast. Welcome! Women in the Middle is about actionable life coaching for women in their 50s designed to help with career boredom, career change, midlife crisis, transition, and empty nest issues, all from a practical mindfulness perspective. You don't have to be in your 50s, though. My younger listeners tell me that they get a lot out of the podcast, even though they are only in their 20s and 30s. So great. It's just that many of the actual examples I use are from the midlife phase of life. All right. Time to dive in. Let's start with a super simple question that you will be able to answer right away. Simple, no drama, just a yes or no. Go with your first answer. Are you a multitasking master? Yes or no? Remember, just yes or no. You know the answer to this question. Don't argue with yourself. You're a multitasking master if you pride yourself in doing several things at once, or you get unusually excited when you can get an abnormal amount of things done simultaneously. And I have to admit, sometimes I feel like a giddy supermom so proud of myself when I juggle a bunch of tasks and get them all accomplished. There's a problem, though. We think we're more efficient when we do more than one thing at a time. However, more and more research is finding that this isn't true at all. Multitasking actually slows you down. It makes you perform worse. And there's more. Multitasking is bad for your brain. It's even been found to lower IQ. Seriously. Electronic gadgets only tempt us to distraction even more. The multitasking lifestyle has become normal, but it's really not good for you. Examples that I think you can relate to are things like your inbox, Facebook, YouTube. Think about it. (laughs) So easy to click on something, such a distraction. And it's also so scary to know that this is our kids' lifelong experience. It's their reality. The way social media naturally interrupts so much of our day is what they know. It's what they've grown up with. Generally speaking, young people have had fewer opportunities than you had for deep focus. Think about it. When you're multitasking, you're not focused or present. And this is a problem. You're not as focused on what you're actually doing. You're giving a bit of focus to lots of things. Energy, attention is going from moving task to task. It's not the best way to go through life because you're not focusing on anything deeply. Also, when you tend to focus on the end point, on getting things done, I could totally relate to this. I'm always just focusing on getting things done. How fast can I get it done? When you do that, you're not in the moment. With all this talk of being present and being in the moment, when you think like that, you are totally not in the moment. And you waste a ton of time constantly switching gears, especially when you think about all that social media stuff going on with all this other stuff, right? So think about your habits of the way you click around. You probably don't even go for a walk without your phone. Tom Sterner of the book, The Practicing Mind, he doesn't believe in the concept of multitasking. Sterner says that our culture's focus on productivity is what drives this desire to do multiple things at the same time, but our brain doesn't work that way. Sterner and others talk about a concept called switch tasking instead of multitasking, And this is because our brain works in a more linear fashion and does one process at a time. It happens quickly, though, so it seems like we're multitasking. But it's not. It's not at all. The bottom line is that all of this stopping and starting that our brain has to do to accommodate our our click-happy lifestyle 
all these multitasking habits, it's a huge waste of energy and we become more scattered and less focused as a result. So what happens is there's a cost. We're not more productive. And there's an irony here too, because we think things take longer when we're more mindful and present in whatever it is we're doing. But in reality, we are way more productive. And Sterner says that the reason is because when we're focused, I quote, quoting him, we are operating more in harmony with how our brains naturally function. So I watched a YouTube video about this from the author of another book called The Myth of Multitasking. His name is Dave Crenshaw. He walks you through a simple exercise to illustrate this, and I'll put the link in the show notes. And I encourage you guys to take a few minutes and try it yourself because it's mind-blowing how uh, switch tasking slows you down. You can really, really see it. And he says that there are three main costs to switch tasking. One, there's an increase in the time it takes you to do things. So it takes more time rather than less time. The second thing is the quality of your work actually decreases. And number three, you'll experience more stress, right? Who needs that? These are all huge costs when it comes to running a business. And I would say also when it comes to running your life. So I wanted to pick up on how we think and feel about productivity and focus, because that is a big part of this whole picture. For example, how comfortable are you focusing on something specific, just one thing? How do you feel when you focus on one thing at a time? Are you relaxed spending time that way? Or do you think you should be doing something else too? Oh my gosh, what else can I be doing? I need to be more efficient. Is that you? (laughs) Do you think you're not being efficient? Do you feel like you're wasting time doing only one thing? Do you want to check your Facebook feed or your email constantly? Do you have an urge to do more? Do you think you're not doing enough? Interesting, right? I bet you can answer those questions with ease. Ask yourself, why do you think you're resisting the idea of doing one thing at a time? I was very resistant to this. I've been doing a lot of work on this myself. What do you make doing only one thing at a time mean? And I want you to really think about this. Is it that you're not fast enough? You're not efficient enough? You're not good enough? Maybe you're lazy? Is it that you're not talented enough? Whatever it is, it's critical. It's judgmental. And women in the middle, my lovely women in the middle, it is a thought. It's not a fact. It's just a subjective thought, a sentence in your mind, floating around up there that you are choosing to think. There are many other ways to think about doing one thing at a time, but this is where your mind goes, right? It's what Sterner Sterner was saying about productivity and this whole culture of productivity. And then I want you to notice how you feel when you think all of those thoughts about not being productive enough and not being efficient enough and maybe being lazy if you don't get more done. How do you feel when you think those lovely thoughts? Not so great. The minute you're critical like this, you're not in the present moment. And it is so easy to slip out of being present. So easy. So now ask yourself, how do you want to feel about allowing yourself to focus? Now that you know it's a good idea, that you'll actually get more done, that you'll do a better job, that you'll have less stress when you avoid switch tasking and just do one thing at a time. So let's say you want to make a change and resist your urge to multitask or what it really is, switch tasking. You want to fully embrace your new decision to focus. It feels like you're slowing down, but you know you're really not. So what would the feeling be? For me, I think it's confident or maybe motivated. Um, okay, I'm going to go with motivated. What would you have to think to create a feeling that you want to feel when you're prioritizing focusing like this? So what would I have to think about what I have to do to create the feeling of motivated? Maybe a thought like this. I'm open to the idea that focusing is better for my brain. So I have to think when I'm crafting these thoughts, I have to think, do I feel motivated when I think that? Or something like this. I love knowing that this approach is a better experience. Is that motivating for me, for you? What about this one? Depending on what you're doing, of course, maybe this thought will be good for you, useful. I'm learning that I'm actually able to do a better job when I focus. That one is actually motivating for me. So I would call that a useful thought because it creates the feeling that I'm looking for to do what I need to do. 
Now, these are very different thoughts than what we usually think, which is usually something like this: "I love getting so much done. I'm so great at multitasking. I'm so good at squeezing it all in. There's not enough time. I'm too busy. I have to be like this." Do you see what I mean? <laughs> are any any of those thoughts going around in your brain? Without supervising your thoughts, your brain will most likely go there to thoughts like these. But when you make a conscious effort, literally, <laughs> to sanction doing one thing at a time, you can feel motivated to follow through. It's really good to take a look inside your head to see what's going on in there. I always talk about it like shining a big giant flashlight on your brain and see what's floating around. You have to know if you don't know what you're thinking, these thoughts are going on up there without your permission. And they're creating feelings for you that you may not want. There's a big consequence because then you are feeling a certain way without your permission too. And it's all coming from you, which is good news and bad news. You're creating it, but it's more good news because it's a thought and it's optional. Thoughts create feelings and awareness to the, all of this is the very first step. So you have your thoughts that create the feelings and then your feelings drive behavior. And then what you do creates your results. And as you've heard me say many times in the podcast, your results prove your thoughts every time 24/7. And this concept is called the model. And it's the mindfulness framework or the fundamental teaching of the life coach school where I trained. And if you want to review it in greater detail, check out episode 2 of the Women in the Middle podcast and I go into it in a lot more detail there. I'll share the link in the show notes. So if you think you're too busy, you will be too busy. If you think you love multitasking because you get so much done, you will continue to love multitasking. Your result will prove your thought. But the reasons will be wrong. They will be incorrect because new research is all over the place. <laughs> you can just be distracted for a second and go click on something and you'll find it. <laughs> It's all over the place that multitasking is bad for your brain and bad for your health. You won't be more productive ultimately. Your you your performance will actually suffer. I remember once when I popped into one of my kids' rooms unannounced and my kid was supposedly doing homework. Know, they, they, he was in high school. And I looked and he had like eight windows open, all these Facebook chats going on as he was doing his work. I was shocked. <laughs> I just didn't do work that way. Um I do smaller projects that way. If I think it's less important, I see myself getting distracted to that level, but to actually be studying, I was surprised that that there was that much chatting going on at the same time. Anyway, sorry, I just had a little flashback, just wanted to share. So the idea again, you won't be more productive ultimately. That your performance will suffer and you will create more stress. Nobody wants that. And now you also know that you have an option to think the thought that creates the feeling you want when you know you want to focus and not multitask. So, you're listening to this podcast for a reason and my guess is that you're an amazing woman in the middle. who wants to make some changes, right? So let's take a close look at some actual tips to help you take the multi out of the task. First, consider making a social media schedule for yourself. Now I know your eyeballs just rolled to the back of your head, but <laughs> just hear me out. Perhaps you only check your email 3 times a day. Maybe you don't touch your phone during a meal or maybe you charge your phone outside of your bedroom at night. Now I know you probably talk to your kids about that stuff and maybe you have no interest in it, maybe you do. You'll have to let me know. But I even caught myself checking email as I was preparing my notes for this podcast about multitasking. <laughs> I couldn't believe I did it. It happened before I noticed what was happening. And then I laughed, but uh it just shows the point. It illustrates the point of how pervasive how pervasive this um switch tasking and clicking around is. It's just so easy to be distracted. All right, here's another idea then. Don't open other windows while you're on the computer. Okay, that one is I think you can get your head around that. And don't talk on the phone while you're driving, even the speaker phone. Try that. Like we're definitely I'm not talking about texting. I'm talking about just talking on the phone even on a speaker phone. Just be mindful of not choosing to do that when you have a choice. I guess you mostly have a choice, but you know what I mean. And of course, sit while you eat. That's a good one. Stop doing other things in the kitchen when your kid or your husband or your partner is talking to you. And I'm sure you can think of some things as well. some things that you regularly do 
several things at a time. Just be on the lookout for them. Pick one and just try to do it full on. You'll catch yourself now, now that we're talking about it, doing more multitasking. Just slow it down, pick one, peel away the layers, and just do one thing, but go all in on it and really focus. Okay, the second area of a suggestion, a tip, is to turn off notifications so you have fewer distractions. Decide to do certain activities with no distractions at all. Some ideas here are things like reading without listening to music, watching TV without looking at your phone, using the computer without checking Facebook. And how about this one, walking the dog or going for a walk without a headset on? Now, I know you might actually be listening to this podcast while you're walking to the dog, but I would just like to offer walk the dog or go for that walk without the headset, without the earbuds, and just notice the difference. Just see what happens. Okay, the third area of suggestion, commit to finishing something before you move on to another task. Now, this idea will make a huge difference to your productivity. It is life-changing. And I bet you'll feel pretty good when you cross completed tasks off your list too. So really focus on completing a task before you distract yourself with something else. What do you think? Are you ready to make a commitment to doing things in your life a little differently? One of the reasons I find this so fascinating is because my coaching focus to help clients regret-proof their lives. When it comes to regret-proofing, my clients consistently talk to me about wasting time. They can't believe so much time has gone by and they still haven't done things they thought they would have done by now. They're finally ready to prioritize certain things so they don't have regrets. And that's why this is so important. Just imagine how much time you waste. Living a more intentional life can start with a small thing, small things like we're talking about. Being present on purpose, going all in with focus. Just imagine how amazing it would be to focus some of that found time on new priorities related to regret-proofing your life so that you can do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it because you've minimized distractions. Less regret, more excitement and productivity. Pretty, pretty, pretty good if you ask me. So that's it for this episode. If you like what you've heard, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. Makes me so happy. I really appreciate it too. Check out the show notes with more information and links at www.susierosenstein.com. And if you're frustrated and want some help, you've come to the right place. As I said, I help amazing women like you get excited about your life again. If you're stuck and not that happy about where you're at, it's time to stop wasting time. Focus on making a change. I offer a free 20-minute insight call and I would love to hop on the phone and connect. I'll be able to give you some insight and you'll be able to see what my coaching programs are all about. Just go to www.susierosenstein.com and hover over the About tab and you'll see free session on the drop down menu. Click there and you can book straight into my calendar. It's super easy and I can't wait to talk to you. Let's do this, ladies, one thought and one task at a time. Seriously, just one. Thanks so much for listening. (laughs) 